but it's presumably the principle about bailing out anybody who's failed. That you when you object. fail, you fail. I mean, I hope that the next time I make a mistake, I can call you, Sarah, and you'll bail me out, or I can call the Bank of England. So no, when you fail, the way it's supposed to work, people fail, somebody comes, takes over the assets, reorganizes, and you start over from a sounder base. What's happening now is people fail, the governments are taking the assets away from the people, the competent people, giving the assets to the incompetent people, and saying, now you compete with the competent people with their money. This is horrible morality, it's terrible uh, economics, and it's not going to work. It seems a really strange argument, though, that you can let a country go under, and it's a more moral thing to do. But the people, why, why should good, honest citizens in Greece, or in Germany, or in the UK, or anywhere else, pay for people who lied, who spent money they didn't have, who spent other do people's money? Do you think they money? would rather why, their country you, went bankrupt? I'm sure they don't. you think that there are lots of people do in Germany... Do you think they would? Of course. I think the people who did the right thing would rather their country go... I would rather my country go bankrupt rather than have to bail out people who did the wrong thing. In America, there were lots of people who saved their money, didn't buy five houses with no money down, and then all of a sudden, they're suffering for all of these people who did dishonest things and are having to now bail them out. Plus, they're being destroyed. The saving class is being destroyed in America because interest rates are zero percent. All these people who've been saving okay. for years are now suffering. You make the point about the suffering, and the world now hates bankers. Are they right to? Well, no, nobody, you shouldn't hate anybody. They're certainly not bankers, not the ones who are competent and honest. No, there are many banks in the United States and in the UK did what they were supposed to do. Now they're being forced to bail out the ones who were dishonest and who did the wrong things. Don't you find that but strange? You, but do you blame on, I'm wondering about the morality of the bankers and those who did wrong, those who just, look, they went and they did their job. They did what they were supposed to do, which was make money. They might have made millions in the process, but they just followed. They might have been short selling, but that's the way the market works. Well, I think most of them were just incompetent. I, I th I'm sure there were dishonest people. I'm sure there were many dishonest people. There always are whenever there's a gold rush. But I, if you ask me, most of them just didn't. They really believed what they were doing. They thought this. Many of them actually owned, bought the paper, the horrible garbage paper, and still own it. They but thought I'm they were doing where a good thing. you think the problem is? Is it just the stupidity of some bankers? Was it because the system was wrong and politicians yeah, were stupid? You want to know where the didn't... problem is? It's in the central banks. It's in the regulators. That's where the, the central bank in America refused to let people fail. In 1998, they bailed out long-term all their friends on Wall Street when long-term capital management failed. Had they let long-term, had the, all those people suffer? Lehman Brothers would still be in business. Bear Stearns would still be in because they would have lost so much money and they would have had to fire so many people, you wouldn't have had all of this garbage come up. So get rid of the central bankers. I'd rather get rid of the central bankers than not, yes. We'd be but better you're serious off. about that. And you would get rid of the central banks. Wouldn't you? Yes, of course I would. The world's gotten along without central bankers for most of its history. America's had three central banks in its history. The first two failed. This one's going to fail, too, because of what the actions that they're taking. Okay. No, we'd be better off without... I'm not saying the world's going to be great without central banks, but it should be better off than what it is now. So when you look at what is being done, in the case of President Obama putting through reforms to banking there, where, where there are moves to stop naked short-selling of bonds in Europe, lots of efforts being made to tame the markets. Can they work? No, of course not. If nothing else, what will happen is people will go to other countries. But even if you stop doing these things, the market is still going to figure out ways to work. People have to buy oil somewhere. People have to raise money somewhere. People have to have loans somewhere. The market's going to figure out a way to solve the so problems. So they move to Asia, and Asia, which you're a great fan of, has, goes through the same problems as has happened in the United States? Of course, of course. There are going to be plenty of setbacks in Asia. In the United States in the 19th, 19th century, we had 15 depressions with a D. We had a horrible civil war. We had very few human rights. We had massacres in the streets. We had very little rule of law. We came out of that as a pretty successful 20th century. Asia's going to have horrible setbacks. Are you deliberately a contrarian? <laughs> well, I'm not a contrarian. People call me that. But basically what I've learned in life is... But you is, react. Somebody says something and you react against it. But Sarah, so, maybe what I've learned in life is normally when everybody's thinking the same way, you should start at least thinking, hey, wait a minute, it cannot be right if everybody's thinking the same way. And it nearly always is that when everybody's thinking the same way, somebody's not thinking. And you should at least examine the other side. Okay, so maybe you, who's a big fan of commodities and doesn't buy stocks, might be buying BP shares. 
Well, I th I've thought about it. I'm not doing it now, but it's certainly on my radar screen because I don't know how this is going to work out. And even once it all is, quote, is solved and is out of the press, there's still going to be a long time before it's time to buy BSP, at least in my experience. But it's certainly, I'm thinking about it. Whenever I see a disaster, I always perk up and say, well, maybe I should start looking. Yeah. Well, it's terrifying to listen to you, though. So the final bit of advice for anybody who just wants to stay safe in the years ahead, what would you say to them to do? Be very careful and think for yourself and don't listen to what you listen to on the BBC or from people like me. Don't listen to me. Think for yourself. Come to your own decisions and if you see everybody thinking the same way, at least examine the other side. And if you're a little girl, beware of the boys. That's what, <laughs> I, that's what I'm teaching my little girls. I was a bad boy. I know. Jim Rogers, thank you for coming on Hard Talk. Thank you.